Well, hi guys, welcome to this Facebook Live. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I have Kunal Botra with me as always to talk stocks. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of stocks because the markets are screaming on the screen about the kind of price movement that we've seen over the last few days. Yes, the index is at 11,700. We had a touch and go moment with 11,800, not officially, but in the pre-open session. And then, you know, the market is already um, talking enough about 12,000, Mount 12,000 coming in on the Nifty. How soon can that happen, Kunal? Well, looking at the speed, I think it's a matter of a couple of weeks, maybe. Yeah. Couple of weeks? I thought you'd say couple of days. A <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> couple of weeks. More, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I, I still think that typically what we've seen in the past, a thousand point rally, you know, the kind of ferocity with which a thousand point rally has come by in the past, that's not been the kind of frenzy fueling this market. I mean, look at the move from 10,000 to now, right? It's come slowly, steadily, then some consolidation, then some readjustment, then a move up. So it's basically making higher lows and then higher highs and in, you know, in your parlance, that's what they say, I mean, learning a little bit about charts, but that's how the market is, seems but to be moving. The best thing about this market is not just about the Nifty rising up higher, it's the kind of sectoral churn which you see. It was led by large cap stocks in the front where the mid caps were taking a, you know, a bit of selling pressure. Then the large caps, they took a bit of a breather, HDFC Bank, HDFC, Kotak Bank, Industry Bank, they're going through a big consolidation, but then you look at the other tier two sectors. You know, the other private sector banking stocks, they managed to make a comeback. IT, pharma, metal stocks, real estate team. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of all of those sectors or all of the moving parts which are coming at the right point of time for the markets, which I believe is, a, is the most important ingredient. So, it's not just about Nifty scaling new highs, but it's the, the strength of large caps, which I believe is the uh, you know, most important USP of this market rally. Oh, absolutely. I also, okay, we're going to be getting in questions and we start off with ITC. There are three questions on ITC. I never thought that the, what's happening with the stock. Exactly. So I think a couple of weeks back when the stock announced its result, it, it broke out of the yeah. 300 move. And now I believe that it's going to be one of the other large caps which should try and participate from here on as well. So trading just about the 300 mark, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but you should see the stock trading up substantially higher. The 2017 high was closer to 340 for ITC if I'm not mm -hmm. wrong. So I believe that the stock should scale back to those levels pretty soon. I'm sure you'd have seen the charts of Jet Airways because, I mean, the number of queries I'm getting on Jet Airways is not even funny. Jet Airways. So, I think in technical terms, after today's volume and the lack of follow-through of selling in the last two weeks, so you know the stock was under the thick of news, but it did not see any selling pressure. And uh, now I think, if I'm not wrong, it's also into the ban period for FNO. So all of this, putting into perspective, I believe that the stock could form a short-term bottom over here. And I wouldn't be surprised that we should see the stock scaling to 350, 400 levels pretty soon. So devoid of all the news flow which is going around, mm. I still believe that there could be a rally in place for this stock. So are you, are you recommending a buy on Jet Airways as well as ITC right now? Absolutely. Oh, interesting. So that's a buy on Jet Airways as well as ITC at the current levels. Uh, um, we have a query coming in from Ashish Kabra on Bharat Forge. Have you taken a look at the charts there? Yeah, the charts are pretty much positive, but uh, you know it's not one of the stronger names in terms of mm -hmm. price performers. You know, I think if I'm not wrong, there was an inverse head and shoulder chart pattern in the making, sure. 645, 646 as a breakout. So yeah. it could be a uh, you know bought to at current levels as well, maybe till uh, you know the 200 moving average, which I think is closer to 720 for the stock. Okay, you know there's been a lot of traction in some of the metal stocks, so Tata Steel, JSW Steel. Um, and I think a rub-off of that is happening on, in Dialco and Vedanta. Um, they've had a great run, Correct. right? They're in a bull run and you see that on the period charts. Absolutely. Bring up any of the top metal stocks, their two-year chart, three-year chart, you'd see that momentum. Can it continue? Can people still buy right now? Is it time to profit take? So, you know, many of these metal stocks, when I look at the long-term charts, they're going through a, a process of a structured, uh, you know, uptrend. So, what transpired in Feb 2016 when these stocks bottomed out, then you saw almost a 16 to 17 month kind of a non-stop rally into these names. Most of these stocks doubled and tripled from those lows. And then you saw a follow through correction. So this process of rise and then a correction, I think is a is a, a perfect setup that these stocks are starting a long term uptrend. Tata Steel, for example, I think the previous high was closer to 700, 750. I believe that the stock should cross that level in the matter of a couple of quarters. And so is the case would happen for stocks like Indalco. But the strongest name in this sector is JSW Steel. And I think after that 2015 breakout of 150, 160 rupees, I think it's just not looked back. So I believe that the stronger stock would still be JSW Steel, but emerging stocks would be Tata Steel and Hindalco. 
Okay, um, you know, I'll just take one question, which is more fundamental in nata, uh, nature. Abhijit is asking about um, uh, advice on IDBI Bank. I'm confused with the news coming in every now and then about LIC IDBI merger. Trust me, I think the market is also trying to wrap their heads around the news flow there, uh, with the open offer, with the regulatory issues. Uh, issues, uh, you know, in markets, uh, they typically say that when in doubt, stay out. So I guess till the dust settles and some clarity comes in on you know what the process is going to be like for LIC to take over IDBI Bank. It's not easy, right? These takeover um, processes and procedures are not really easy. We've seen the consolidation in the PSU banking space, and you know it requires there are many impediments and many hurdles, and many regulatory clearances. So I mean, I'll just say that yes, a news flow is thick on this one, uh, and so till there's clarity, maybe one wants to just wait and watch the story. Uh, Kunal uh, Shashank is asking. Um, okay, I don't know. It's PEL. PEL. What next it's on PEL? Pyramid Enterprise. Okay, Pyramid Enterprise. Sorry, sorry, so, Shasha. So Pyramid uh -huh. Enterprise was one of the recommendations which we had, I think, start of this week as well. Yeah. It, it's, it's looking very attractive on long-term charts. You know, when stock comes out of a three-year downtrend or two and a half years kind of downtrend, and then you see a breakout of sorts, and those breakouts don't last for one or two months. So I think for PEL, I think this could just be the start of things. I think around the 3,000, 3,100 mark, it's still on the verge of breakout. So I believe as a long-term uh, you know, position play, it still could be bought into. But the ideal strategy is to try and wait for dips. You know, the Nifty Pharma index overall looks to be a bit uh, you know, heavy in terms of short-term charts. You might see the index retracing a bit. Use that retracement on the index overall as a good buying strategy on stocks like PEL and even Sun Pharma to that extent. Okay, I'm still seeing a lot of stocks come by. Axis Bank, let's talk banks. Um, what's your pecking order there? Top three. Corporate banks? Uh, no, anything. Which are your top three buys from a from the banking sector? So the first one would be Axis Bank. Uh, I believe. Uh, in fact, we were discussing. In fact, I also posted on a couple of the. You know, Anoop has asked about Axis Bank. Yeah, social media links as well. That Axis Bank has formed a triangular pattern, which is very similar to, uh, you know, many of the other historical charts on large cap names. And when you see such kind of chart pattern breakouts, uh, you know, you see the stock going to a different orbit. I think for Axis Bank. The target comes to closer to 800, 850. So the stock mm -hmm. is trading at 650, 660, and you could see a further upset of 30% from current levels as well for Access Bank. So that's one of the large cap names on the banking side, which looks very attractive. The second would be uh, you know something like uh, you know SPI. Okay. Because I think after that big breakout, crossing 200 moving average as well, I think SBI should uh, you know restart an uptrend. So I think these two could be the large cap stocks on the banking side, which should be from the front. Okay, just trying to take some more uh, last few queries. Actually, uh, there's one person who's asked about no sell. Would you have taken a look at the charts there? No, no, no too I specific. Um, we have a question on TCS. Rajendra is asking about Farhan. Uh, you could actually just replay this conversation. We've spoken about ITC and Jet Airways. Uh, Kunal has a buy on both, so that could address your query there. Rajendra is wanting to know about TCS. Uh, you know, IT, where, where do things stand for TCS? Remember, we had done a deep analysis. Exactly. Kunal had spoken about the opportunity of a strong upside in TCS. It had started, it had started blinking on his screen in January itself. Uh, and he'd spoken about how the, and I, I we you know, just ca casual off the record conversation we used to have, and I used to be like, really? Like, what are you saying? Like, you know, their quarterly numbers. I'm meeting, just about meeting market expectations. This is about two quarters back. But he was very convinced that all the bad news is behind, all the slowdown is behind, and the stock is just going to get into a zone of its own. Where does the stock go from here now? Now, it, I think it becomes into a free uh, you know, zone kind of a trading area. Such levels of 2000, 2070 plus, I think historically also we've not seen on TCS. And indicators have entered into uh, you know, the what we call as a fourth gear mode, yeah. where these stocks keep on cruising up higher devoid of any negative news, so whether it's rupee depreciation which is helping them sure. or whether it's uh, you know their own fundamentals which is taking care. But I think these stocks are not going through any phase of correction. So I think as an ideal strategy, large cap stocks which don't correct, which give you stable uptrends, the other ones should be bought into. Okay. Finally, finally, um, Tata Motors. Shashank again is putting in uh, on Tata Motors. A any views there? Because it's been such an underperformer. That's the last so question you know, by the way. Uh, when I and this is very interesting because many of these stocks, Tata Motors, and I'll also take maybe a UPL United Phosphorus. The stock has been to thick of things, but when I scan, since uh, scan through the chart patterns for both of these stocks on long-term basis, they have entered 
into the oversold territory. Now they could look, they could remain into prolonged oversold territory for a couple of months. Yeah. It's possible that the stocks may, so for example, for Tata Motors, it may remain at 250, 250 for you know 200 to 250 could be a new range for Tata Motors in terms of support levels. But if you are only if you are a long term player and looking to buy stocks or you know good good stocks at uh, you know, strong oversold territories, then I believe Tata Motors could be a good bet. Okay. But if you're a very short term trader, then I believe avoid Tata Motors because there is no signs of trend reversal as such on the short term parameters and it could continue to, uh, you know, drag. Load. I would just say map the earnings trend. You Absolutely. know, from a fundamental perspective, uh, they're, ma they're doing the right things, they're trying to streamline the business, um, you know, work things out to push JLR uh, overseas and the domestic market as well. Uh, see signs of a turnaround, you know, because the markets, the stocks typically move ahead of the curve, uh, pricing in a revival in earnings. So, you know, when you get early signs of that happening, Correct. I think the stock will also Correct. react to it. Before you uh, say bye, uh, help our viewers with two of Kunal's ideas uh, for the medium term, let's say three to six months. Well, uh, I think uh, one of them would be, of course, Access Bank, which you spoke of. Hmm. No, go, go beyond Access Bank. You have to give them something new. Does it come with <laughs> they come with me. They take the time out to ask you questions, Kunal. Give them something new. Okay. Maybe some of the ideas that you discussed in the morning, two of them. So, uh, you know, one of the ideas which I really, really like, and I think uh, I think I'll discuss only one idea okay. because okay. that's a very important uh, in technical breakout, and that's LNT Finance. In trading at 181, 183 levels, I believe that this stock is poised for a, a new range altogether. You know, the kind of chart patterns which I see on the daily time frame for LNT Finance as compared to what it was when it was a, a two-digit stock, I think it's mirroring exact kind of phenom uh, you know chart pattern. So I think on long-term basis, I wouldn't be surprised that the stock should even cross that 225, 250 range over the next uh, you know two, three quarters. So I think that's one of the large caps which I'm extremely bullish upon. Okay. Uh, well, that's time out then. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for joining in to this Facebook Live. Uh, we'll try and get Kunal again on Friday if he has time. But other than that, otherwise, next week sometime, I uh, will catch up with Kunal on Stock Talk right here on 18 Now. Thanks very much for tuning in.